Okay, so we're getting this question. Are we on the edge? Are we on the precipice of a housing market crash? <laughs> no, we're not. we're not. To have a crash, you actually have to have inventory. And we really don't have inventory, so let's just go through the why. Now, there's some naysayers out there, and they're saying, George, dude, we're heading for a recession. Well, that is entirely possible. Uh, it all depends on what the administration decides to do, how the feds decide to mitigate inflation here, which historically they're doing the same things that historically has never worked. Uh, just take a look at Jimmy Carter's era, but take a look at other alternatives, uh, much like what uh, Greenspan did, which was far more effective. A little sloppy, a little junky, but still effective. And that is the big difference. But, you know, who knows? They don't pick up my phone and call me. I guess I don't have the red line. Maybe I should get a red phone. Yeah, maybe not. Anyway, it's just one of those things. So here's the thing. We have to take a look at not only the interest rates, not only what's going on with buyer perception, okay? But we also have to consider inventory. Now think of it this way. This is super important. I'm going to bonk, bonk, hit you with a little logic hammer here. If we are normally used to having about 16,000 homes on market, well, between 14 and 16,000 homes on market uh, about this time, which is our spring market, our very active spring market. And yet we only have like 5,300 homes available today. Wouldn't you say we have an inventory issue? We are still only about 35%, 33% of where we should be. Okay, well, when we take that into consideration, okay, it's kind of like going into the store. And if you have a store, like if you go in right now, okay, let's use toilet paper since everybody remembers this, right? If you go into the store right now, there's plenty of toilet paper out there, right? But in 2020, when we had the, the, the lockdown, we had COVID, right? And we had to had to take a step back, all of a sudden, that became a massive commodity and it, the inventory disappeared. So if we only have five packages of, of toilet paper, we have 500 buyers, I guarantee you the toilet papers <laughs> will find its highest and best value. Notice I didn't say use, I just said value. So understand, we have a very limited inventory, just like we did with toilet paper back in 2020, which to me is still rather funny of all things to have hit the uh, media for a uh, shortage was toilet paper. Anyway, still kind of funny, nonetheless. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what's going on because, and the reason I'm mentioning this and that we're hitting this up front is because this number at 33.4% increased market inventory year over year, 2021 versus 2022. You might say, George, that is, that is a mighty big number. And, I, and of course, this number is a big number. I agree. However, if you're dealing with small numbers to begin with, it doesn't take much of a number to make it a big number. As an example, this number translates to 1,456 additional homes on market year over year. And you're like, okay, that's fabulous. Okay, so let's take that one step further. That is the entire Northwest MLS. I wanna bring in into perspective. Canadian border, all the way out to the coast, half of Eastern Washington, half of the Olympic Peninsula, half of the state of Washington. That is peanuts, it's small. Now, don't get me wrong, sellers, we had our Last week. So last week we beat last week, but again, that's normal. It's seasonal normal. Okay. Because we'll, because we'll post this and you can see our, there we go. You can see our hump. It's normal. That's nothing new. <laughs> so don't be surprised, but you might hear some, oh my gosh, 
oh my gosh, inventories, it's off the chart. Sales are falling off. Chickens are falling from the sky. It's not the case. It's normal, but here's the funny thing. Guarantee we're gonna absorb it, because look at this. Just in the last seven days, 1,756 homes. This only happened because of Friday, all right? Which is awesome, don't get me wrong. And sellers, thank you. Keep, keep it coming, all right? Because we can absorb it. We can absolutely absorb it because we are still starving for inventory. There's still a massive pent up demand. Okay, yes. With the increase in mortgage rates, which a lot has to do with what the feds are doing. The feds have no, they do not, they do not dictate what mortgage interest rates are. That is done on the open market, the stock market, okay? Watch your bonds, watch your 10-year treasuries, watch the ticker for mortgage-backed securities. Watch those. That's, as those improve, rates come down. The feds, however, remember, for those of you who are new, remember the feds only control commercial credit, right? Okay, your credit cards, car payments, things like that. They also adjust HELOCs, home equity line of credit. So if your second mortgage is not fixed, you might want to take a look at it and be and look at that based on what your first mortgage is. Now, if you know, I capitalize on if your mortgage rate is like 2.8%, uh, it's better to keep that loan. But if your mortgage interest rate is like three point or let's say 4%, uh, you may want to reconsider and, and consolidate that or at least get it on a fixed term and, because otherwise it's going to adjust. All right. So just like your credit cards are going to start adjusting by a half a percent. Okay. So understand mortgage interest rates are going up. So buyers have had to tighten the belt. Why? Well, because they took a hundred thousand dollar haircut. That's why but from December to today, you, you know, buyers for the same cost of funds can afford basically a little less than, well, a little more than five, you know, a hundred thousand dollars or about $537 a month. It's actually a tad bit higher than that now, but understand that when you do that pullback, okay, that just means we're seeing not as many multiple offers. Okay. But hang on a second. That doesn't mean we're not seeing multiple offers because we are. In fact, of the, of the uh, three listings that we just, we just put under contract, we all have, we had multiple offers on each one of them. Okay. And that's super important, but understand buyers are super, super smart right now. So the homes that are overpriced, right? So we had 292 reduced homes, prices reduced. Those are people that missed the market, got a little too aggressive. Okay. You had 106 that canceled and expired in the last seven days. <laughs> A little too aggressive okay buyers are super smart so not as aggressive with the escalations with our multiple offers all right now understand if you are on market longer than seven to ten days you've missed the mark i'm just telling you when you do not have when you have <laughs> when you have five rolls of toilet paper or five packages of toilet paper and 500 buyers and your package of toilet paper did not sell Okay, well, your price is too high. And just understand, the market speaks very clearly with that. Overpricing your home is a huge, massive mistake. Okay, so I put this up. I've had a number of conversations with sellers. Who's, uh, in fact, Dara, Dara, just want to welcome you back. It's great to hear from you again. Your home evaluation has been shot off to you. Just want to let you know that. Just a shout out to Dara. She's awesome sauce. I haven't chatted with her in a few years and she re-engaged saying, I need to know my home evaluation. We do about 80 of them a week. When you're marketing, that was my little sidebar chat. Uh, when you're marketing or when you're marketing your home, you're put, you know, you're, you're out actively trying to attract a buyer or your listing agent is. Marketing is not, is not putting your home in the MLS. That is not marketing. Just understand there's a lot of folks out there that, they said, you know, I say, okay, so what kind of marketing are you doing to get your home sold? Because they're they're asking questions, right? Because they're calling us, asking you a question, and I'm like, hey, listen. They're like, oh yeah, well, you know, it's in the MLS, and you know, it's going out to people, and I'm like, okay, that didn't answer my question. That's not marketing. What is? What are you? What are you guys doing to market your home? What are you doing to get eyeballs on your property? We get 63% more showings because of marketing that we do 
with our sellers. That's why our homes sold and others did not, okay? And some of that is price, yes, but the rest of it is marketing. And that is gonna be super important. So the buyers are super smart. You need to attract them and understand that of the multiple offers, if you do get multiple offers, they're not as crazy an escalation. Okay, but that doesn't mean the market is crashing. That means that it is starting to flatten out. Totally normal. Buyers, buyers took a haircut on interest rates, right? We had to cinch it up, pull it back a little bit. Okay, that's not uncommon. And that was as expected. Watch watch our prior shows in, in uh, from October of last year moving forward. You will see that consistent message. Hence, that's why you need to subscribe to this channel. There's no cost, there's no obligation. It gives you great information so you know how to make the, be the best business decision, right? Because marketing your home is, is part of that business decision. Pricing is part of marketing. Remember, the price is the first impression when you market your home. Remember that. It's not what it looks like. Well, that's second. The first impression is price because we all do it. We all look at the price and we automatically, within a nanosecond, say yes, no. Yes, no. Okay? So price is first impression, so keep that in mind. All right. So interest rates are cooling off buyers. Hands down, interest rates are cooling off buyers. They're backing off. They're regrouping a little bit and reevaluating their buying power. That doesn't mean they've left the market. Now, yes, <laughs> there's a lot of buyer fatigue. Okay? Hands down. People got tired of the multiple offers, crazy escalations. Buyers are like, man, I, I can only go in the ring with Mike Tyson a couple of times and get beat up, right? Uh, hey, I get it, but that is tapering down. Now, does that mean we're heading towards a market shift? No, no, if the, if the, if the weight is like this or the pendulum is way over here, just because we start to come back to the middle doesn't mean that we're switching to a buyer's market. It's not what that means. It does mean, however, we're starting to get a little bit closer to a balanced market, which benefits everybody. Even sellers benefit from this. Now, there's been a lot of folks saying, hey, wait a second, George. <laughs> That's a lot of homes come on market. We're up 33.4%. I said, well, hey, listen, normal seasonal inventory is what we're looking at for the most part, but we're still super low on inventory. We have 12 to 13 days of inventory today where on Wednesday we had seven. <laughs> so today's a great day. Just like the U2 song, have a great day. Anyway, so, but understand that as we are seeing part of that pullback with the, with the, with the buyers, there's still a lot of pent up demand. Well-priced homes are still going to go off market. Heck, that's why we had 1,756 and 100 contract, which almost met our staggering highest number of homes coming on market. We look over here, we can see that inventory is up 900 homes, 2.9%. This is peanuts, right? Pended, pended are down by 600 homes. Why? Well, part of this, because this is only a recent change, we're struggling with inventory. But hold on, look at this. We're at 4.8% less homes sold year over year. And you're like, George, yeah, you're still down. Wait a second. Last week, it was 5.7. The week before that, it was like 6.3. The week before that, it was seven something. The week before that, or the month before that, was um, like 8.5%. We keep chipping away at this. Look at this over here. Month of April. It is the 30th, but technically the 29th for numbers. Look at this. Last week, 5.1. This week, 2.5. That's just April, month over month. That's pretty impressive. So we've actually reduced by half the number of, you know, the so we have a lesser number of solds, but we've reduced that. Now, I guarantee you that this weekend, there's, there's going to be a lot of, I know for a fact, there's a lot of people looking at homes right now. Uh, even though it's a little rainy, they are out looking at homes. Why? Because now they're seeing other options that they didn't get to see before. And they know that, hey, I can look at a rate buy down. I can still get a really good rate. We know, George said, rates are gonna be in uh, the sixes come September-ish, you know, maybe even as high as seven by the end of uh, the year. Yeah, you're right. Uh, depending on what the feds do, because 
they're uh, they're starting to pull back. In fact, the big investors right now, the industrial investors, okay, that manage billions of dollars, their biggest fear is what the feds are doing right now. And they are worried that the feds are, I know, gonna duff it. And sadly, they're kind of heading in the duffing kind of market trend, but uh, there's a lot of bigger eyeballs and hopefully they start listening and seeing some of the different options because there are different options out there for them to consider other than, hey, I'm gonna raise the, the federal borrowing rate, which does nothing for anybody, uh, just to let you know. All right. Uh, I'm not going to get into an economics class on that one. All right. So when we take a look at over here, uh, you know, our inventory, new homes on market was only 300, uh, you know, for the month to date. We only had 300 more homes come on market than we did last year for the same month of April. Okay. Pended, pended are up 2.4%. Why? Because we've started to see this increase, which is exactly what we want. That's exactly what we need. So the uptick in inventory uh, is going to be absolutely beneficial. This number, okay, don't worry about this number. It is, it's actually a good thing. This is not a bad thing. It just, it would be nice if we, we could double our inventory. Um, again, uh, let me use the sponge analogy when we talk about absorption, right? When we say, okay, George, what does that mean? If I have a super dry sponge, we all know. We all know what I'm talking about. One of those crinkly, old, you know, bonk, 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 you know, sponges, you know, that just shrivel up, right? Okay, if I put that on the counter, okay, so put it on a plate. Uh, a father actually did this and said, hey, next time you do the analogy, you should say, put it in a plate, don't put it on the counter, we got water everywhere. <laughs> okay, so put it in a plate <laughs> and, uh, and then take a, a cup of water uh, or a glass of water and start filling it up, right? And you're gonna see that that sponge just sucks it all in like that, right? And it, and it starts getting bigger, right? And it sucks it in and it sucks it in and you keep adding water. You're like, wow, how much water can this thing take? It's our market right now. We are still sucking in the water. We have not gotten to the point where when you add enough water and then all of a sudden you see a little bit of water ring come around that sponge, you know, where the, okay, so the sponge is at that point where it really can't absorb really that much more water, right? So it's going to have to either get squeezed or, you know, has to, uh, uh, what is it going, you know, evaporate. It's like one of those E words, right? Uh, and, and that, when you hit that point, okay, that's when you have four to six months of inventory, what they say is a healthy, balanced market. We haven't seen that since 2013, for heaven's sakes. So if you think about it, we have had a, a market uh, inventory issue for a long time. And it is since 2017, it actually went up 2018, 2019, kind of peaked and then bam, we just hit the floor in 2020 until today. I mean, it has been like a roller coaster. All right. So understand when you think about it, our sponge is super dry. It's not gunk, 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 super hard dry, but it is just got a little bit of water. We could absolutely take, if we doubled our inventory, we'd take it off the market. Hands down. Well, priced homes, we'd take it off the market. That's how much buyer demand is still out there. All right, guys, you're doing fine. Interest rates, yeah, they came down a little bit last week or midweek. They came down a little bit. Yay. And <laughs> right back up again. Okay. So understand mortgage interest rates are not controlled by the feds. It's by the open market. Watch your tickers, your bonds, 10 year treasuries and mortgage backed securities. Watch those tickers as they improve interest rates come down. Uh, subject also to the feds remarks. Now the feds can and do scare the big industrial investors on their silly remarks. But anyway, nonetheless, understand, watch those tickers because as they improve, they come down. Interest rates can change daily, hourly, and of course, weekly, naturally, right? It's the stock market. It goes up and down all the time. So just may pay attention. If you have not updated your pre-approval, you better do that right away because there's a lot of folks that uh, they've just learned that, whoops, uh, they just take a, hey, you know what? I have to reduce my purchase price by 50,000, 100,000, you know, you know, based on interest rates today. All right, make sure you do that so you do not have a false start. That is, there's nothing worse than the risk and the stress of potentially losing your earnest money, which should never happen. Make sure you're doing that homework. Make sure you're watching these videos. Again, subscribe, it's free. Share the link. Hey, when you, when you subscribe, you're telling us you like the information. 
people send us lots of questions and we answer them very quickly in about 30 minutes except for on sundays we answer your questions super fast so ask questions subscribe hit the bell so that you know when these are coming up and our future coming up hey here's uh here's our uh, inspection here's heating here's plumbing here's roof uh, here are foundation and we will be doing uh smaller videos for each one of these now I would be curious to see what you guys are going to think what's going to happen uh, in June through July, uh, actually May, June and July, because I know what typically happens, but respond back. Tell us what you think is going to happen over the next three months based on rates and market uh, activity. In the meantime, it's a little wet out there. Stay dry. Have an absolutely beautiful day. I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.